Hey YouTube, I decided to go ahead and post this uh, video because I thought it might be a useful thing for some of you. What we're looking at here is the Samsung CLP315W. And we've used this in our homeschooling endeavors for nearly three years now. And the uh, color toner cartridges are starting to run down uh, out, of, out of toner and uh, not being terribly interested in purchasing a complete set, I decided to figure out if there was a way I could fool the thing into thinking that the cartridges had been replaced, essentially reset the page counts on them, uh, so that I could uh, use uh, toner refill kits rather than replacing the cartridges for 45 to 50 to maybe even more than that uh, dollars a piece. And to help me with that, I found a great uh, Great website, great uh, blog post that somebody did, and I'm putting the link to that in the description of the video, so you can click through to that. Uh, the fellow who did that particular uh, page uh, is, he has the CLP315, the non-Wi-Fi version. Uh, the, in fact, it's not even the network version. So there's a few subtle differences. Uh, for one thing, back here, uh, there's a, a network port on mine. Of course, there's a Wi-Fi radio inside. You can see the lights all blinking right up here that indicate cartridges are low. Uh, but first and foremost, I would definitely refer you to the uh, uh, to the uh, blog post down there in the in the description because that's going to give you lots of good information on uh, how to hack this printer and the method that the guy went about toward you know, figuring out how to. I'm going to go ahead and print off a, a status here. This is going to give us our initial page counts. Uh, while we're waiting for that to print, that website is rumburg.org slash printer hack. R-U-M-B-U-R-G dot org slash printer hack. And several uh, Posters uh, in the comments section provided some great information about the uh, uh, about this this model, the 315W. So uh, here we go. Here's a well. Let's print another page. You can start to see that the black toner is in fact running low. Hey, here's your uh, here's your your page counts. You can see we're at 919 uh, pages on uh, yellow. The toner remaining is 3%, 5, uh, 5 rather, 3% on magenta, 3% on cyan, 3% on black. You can see what those numbers look like. You can see the present date, uh, the last uh, the last used date, I guess I should say, is what that is. And you can see the first installed date of 12109 for those cartridges. All right. Well, it's time to take this thing apart because we need to get behind this panel right here. So we're going to... Uh, Pause the video. Put the side off it here, and uh, here's the circuit board in question. We're going to look down here, though, and we can see that the blog post uh, shows the location of the chip right here and just kind of look at it in reference to where this uh, uh, motor is up here and where these various connectors are where this ribbon cable is right here if we go up here and take a look at our our printer it's not exactly the same but from what i can tell based on the comments on that blog post this is the chip right here uh, it's a bit closer to this ribbon cable as you can see and the circuit board itself is somewhat different there's the motor that we saw on the photograph. So they're, they're, they're close, but it's not exactly the same. And from what I can tell, it's the uh, top left pin right here is the one that we need to ground during the uh, boot procedure in order to reset our page counts. And one of the differences is that we need to 
uh, ground it only until the printer starts making noise, not all the way through the boot procedure. So what we're going to do uh, is go ahead and solder a uh, little thin piece of wire onto that pin, and then we're going to find a handy place to ground the thing, maybe to uh, well, maybe to that, uh, that grounding point right there. That will be where we'll do it. And then we'll see if we can uh, reset the uh, reset the, the copy counts. Shot here. Okay, so here's our wire. I figure I'll just ground it to this uh, screw terminal right back in here. It's got a nice bright green wire on it, so we know that it's a ground wire. And what we'll do is uh, go ahead and ground it and power on the unit. And we'll see what happens. All right, we're grounded. Oops, hit the switch, wrong direction there. Let's try that again. All right, here it is coming up. Getting our blinks uh, from the status lights up here. Now we're getting the, there we go. Coming up. We got a green light up top here. And we are awaiting the blue light. The blue light just came on for Wi Fi. So far, so good. We're going to run our configuration report here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and put our piece of paper in for that. warm up. Just for clarity, uh, leaving the side off of this thing while I do this, uh, but it should go without saying that you shouldn't touch any of this stuff while it's energized, just to be on the safe side. Now, the first noticeable thing I can see is that I, my indicator lights are all off up here. And they were blinking before to indicate low toner uh, on all four toner cartridges, so that's a good sign. Uh, let's go ahead and run our configuration page. I'm going to hold the button down. Got a slow blink and a fast blink and we release and here comes our configuration report I printed it on the back of the other configuration report and uh, well there we go uh, try to position this where you can clearly uh, see everything on it Come on. And there's the numbers. Consumables life. Zero pages on the fuser, the transfer roller, the tray roller, the transfer belt. Zero pages on the yellow. Zero pages on the magenta. Zero pages on the cyan. And zero pages on the black cartridge. That's going to be a success, I'd say. So one mistake that I made here after I clipped the wire and power the machine back up. I ran the configuration report again and found out that all my numbers were back. 919 on the yellow, 973 on the magenta, 
971 on cyan and 799 on black. And I realized that I had made a mistake. We have to increment the page count to something other than zero in order to get our new page count to stick. So the suggestion made in the uh, blog post in the description is that you go ahead and run the uh, color demo page first. Hold down the button until you get a slow blink, run the color configuration or the color demo page. Then you run your configuration page and your count is reset to one page on all four cartridges. If it's reset to all, zero on all four, well, you're part of the way there. So you need it reset to one, and to do that, you're going to run a print. Uh, and the easiest one to run is the color demo page because it's generated by the printer. You don't have to have it connected to anything. So after doing that, we should be able to cycle the power off and the thing stays on uh, page one. So that's an important footnote. Because otherwise, as soon as you reboot the machine, you're going to lose your uh, reset page count. All right, folks, that's it. Thanks for watching.